Hi there folks, Conrad here with Open Source Options and Geospatial School. Check out this awesome deep learning segmentation that I was able to do in QGIS and I'm going to show you how you can do it. So here's the classification. I did this all in QGIS with a plugin and pre-trained models and I want to show you how you can take advantage of deep learning in your workflows. So go ahead and stay tuned. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is download this plugin here. It's called Deepness, and so I'll show you how to do that right now. Let's install the Deepness plugin. We're going to start in QGIS. We're going to go to Plugins, Manage and Install, and we're going to go to All, and I'm going to search for Deepness, Deep Neural Remote Sensing, and I'm going to install this plugin. Okay, and now we have this error here um, because we have to install additional Python packages, which we will go through next. I'm going to close this. Hope it tells us we can install these packages here. So if we close that error message we had, then we can install the packages. And it's going to try to install this itself. And you can't see me on the screen, but it had a command prompt open up and it's running some things there. You can see that it's working on some things here. And I'll just pause this while this uh, finishes and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so those, finish, those packages finished installing and we can test and close. Or we can just close, we can say test and close. And we should be good. So now we can close there. And now we have our plugin installed. And we'll come back and we'll go through how to use this next. Now, once you have Deepness installed, and if you do run into issues, let me show you where you can get some help here. So let's go and just search for Deepness QGIS. And we'll go to the QGIS plugins page for deep neural remote sensing. That's the plugin there. And we'll go to details and we'll go to the plugin homepage. And there's help here for installation, QGIS supported versions, all those things. Um, the next thing we want to find is this deepness model zoo. This is super helpful. This shows all the models that you can get to run with deepness. Um, so we're gonna use this land cover segmentation model here. And the way you use this model, you're gonna click on this, and it's gonna take you to own cloud to download this model. And you're just gonna click download here, and you're gonna download that. Now, I've already downloaded this, so I'm not gonna download it again, but it's this Deep Lab V3 land cover Okay, 4C for 4 class. So I've got that one downloaded. I might also show you this um, land cover segmentation for Sentinel-2. I didn't get as good of results with this one, but you can also download this. Once again, just click on it. It will bring up the own cloud file, and you can download that model. And once you have that model downloaded, you're good to go. Now, the one thing I will say that was kind of frustrating about these models, there's not great documentation on them. I mean, it gives you a description, but I couldn't find out which image bands correspond to which bands in the model, things like that. The Euroset data set I found didn't have the best documentation. Maybe I didn't read the paper very well, but they didn't even say what Landsat level they were using, or not Landsat, but what quality level. If it was um, Sentinel uh, L1C or l you know, or L2A. So anyway, whatever the case, this is still going over to download, but that's how you get the models. You're gonna download them from this model zoo, okay? There are regression models, so you can have like a place recognition, there are object detection, so you can um, identify planes, oil storage, cars detection. I haven't played around with these a whole lot yet, um, but there's, there's other things here you can do your own models. So that's where you can get these models in Deepness. Now let's go back to QGIS. So we've got Deepness installed. I'm gonna make a new project here. Well, no, don't care. I'm gonna discard this. 
So we've got deepness installed. Oops, I did the wrong thing. There we go. We've got deepness installed. We have the plugin here. We need to add some data. So here what I have is I have this ortho photo. This is USA NAEP imagery, the National Agricultural Imagery Project. It's not what this high resolution model was trained on. But we're gonna test and see how well it does. These data are about 60 centimeter resolution. We can go check it over here. So if we go down and check our pixel size, we're about you know 0.6 meters, so 60 centimeters. And we're gonna to need to know that information for running deepness. All right, so let's have this here. Let's go to deepness and just open up our plugin by clicking on deepness. If you don't see it here, you can go to plugins, deepness, and click deepness there. This will bring up the side panel. For the input layer, you want to select your imagery. I only have one thing there. You can do the entire layer. You can mask with polygons. You can do the visible part. Um, we'll just do the entire layer for this example. And now we have different model types. We have the segmenter, the regressor, all these other ones. We're going to use a segmenter. And now I'm going to browse for that model I downloaded. I downloaded mine to this temp folder. And it is this Deep Lab V3. So I'm going to open that. And now I can reload the model to reload the parameters. I can load the default parameters. Um, and you can see the model info there. Now here we can see the image input requires three bands. Um, our, our image input is three bands. The model input requires three bands or three channels, which so we those line up. Um, we're just paste, we're putting these in as, in sequence, so hopefully it's the right sequence. I couldn't find documentation to show otherwise, so we're going to go with that. Here the resolution we're going to put this at sixty centimeters because our image is sixty centimeters. Um, we can't change the tile size because that's something for the model that we're just not going to be able to change. And we can adjust tiles overlap here if we want to. Let's try this at 15% um, and see what happens. And then we can try it again at like 50% or something. Okay, um, class probability threshold. We probably want to put that at 50% greater. And we can remove small segment areas. This is usually set at 9 or something like that. Okay, and you can play around these parameters to see what gives you the best uh, options. So once you have that set up, now we're ready to run this model. And here's where it's just super powerful. Just inside of QGIS, we've loaded this deep learning segmentation model. Now I can just click run. Oh, and it says it's already processing. This is strange. Um, anyway, there it goes. It's going now. And you can see that we have this running here and it's processing. So this is gonna take just a few minutes to complete, but it's not gonna take as long as some models do because this model's already been trained. And so we're gonna get results within 10 minutes here. So I'll just pause this and then we'll come back and see how things look. Okay, so we finished processing and you can see that we have some basic stats here. We have this background area, which accounts for the majority of our image. We have buildings, woodland, water, and road um, with the other ones. So I wanna click okay and we'll take a look at this classification, segmentation. And one thing I want to note here that I forgot before is there's this output format and I selected all classes as separate layers. And what that does, it gives you model output in this layer group where we have all these different layers um, selected here. You can change this to separate layers, um, single classes of vector layer, what, whatever you like. I kind of like this output. But let's go ahead and take a look at what we have and see how accurate this is. Um, I think we're gonna expect some discrepancies just because of the nature of the data, but that's okay. So if we look in here, you can see, I'm gonna turn off background so we can get rid of that. You can see that a lot of this water here was classified correctly. Some of it was missed. Um, some of it appears to be classified as woodland. You can see that, some woodland in the middle. Um, but not too bad overall. We have woodlands, um, where woodlands should be, it looks like, for the most part. Um, you can see that we have some water down here in the shadowy area, but overall we did decent. I think the thing that looks like it did really well is roads. These roads are kind of this green color, and if we turn those roads on and off, Overall, it's doing a pretty good job finding those roads. 
and buildings. Doing pretty good finding buildings. Um, and this is a model I didn't train on these data. This is just, you know, out of the box running on data that it wasn't designed for. And qualitatively, we're getting some decent results for some classes, not great results for other classes. There's a lot of background area that I wish we could classify. But you can see I'm pretty impressed with how those roads and the buildings do. So really cool how you can just pull that deep learning uh, algorithm right out of the box. Okay, now I'm gonna turn these off. Let's do this with Sentinel data. It's just a little more involved. We do a little bit of data prep for Sentinel. But let's go ahead and do it so you can see how that's done. So I have this Sentinel to a scene. Um, this is level 1C data. It's in the safe format. So in here you go into the granule folder, and then you go into this, and then you go into image data, and then we'll slide over, and I want bands 1 through 8A. So all those bands, I add them in. Say OK. Let's go back to my layers. And now what I want to do is I want to combine these into a virtual raster. So let's go to raster miscellaneous, build a virtual raster. Let's select inputs. I'm going to select all to start. And I'm going to deselect my ortho and say OK. Now I want to place each of these into a separate band. I want my resolution to be the highest um, of the layers. And I want to resample using um, let's use bilinear cubic. I'm going to use bilinear. And we'll leave this all the same. I'm just going to save this as a temporary file. And let's just run this. Okay. And let's close that. And now that I have this virtual raster, I can remove all these layers to clean things up. Okay. So I have this virtual raster. Um, it's going to have 13 bands. That looks kind of cool the way it's displayed like that with that band combination. Um, anyway, let's just zoom out here a little um, to this extent. And we're going to load a new model and try that new model here. So I still want to do a segmented model, but here I want to select virtual. I want to change my model. So I've downloaded the Sentinel model from the Deepness Model Zoo. And I'm going to go into temp, and that model is the Eurosat 13 channel um, one here. So let's open this. And let's load the default parameters. The resolution is 10 meters, so 1,000 centimeters. So that's correct. We're going to leave the defaults the same. This is where I was able to find any metadata describing which inputs map to which band. So we're just going to leave it as a default. We have 13 bands. We're going to the 13 channels. Um, we're going to leave it there. Um, tiles overlap 5%. Um, let's... give this, let's make this like 30%. Just playing around. I don't know if there's a good answer for this. I'm just giving it 30%. We're leaving these like this. All classes separate layers again. And let's go ahead and click run. And it says it's already in progress, but I think that's going to come out in just a minute. So I'll pause this again while it runs. And there it goes, it's running now. So I'll pause this and I'll get back to you when it's done. And there's a couple of things I want to tell you about. One, I made a mistake. I meant to do this for just the visible part of the layer, but I did it for the entire layer. So it's going to take a little while to process. It's going about, you know, 1% per minute probably. So we've got a few more minutes. Maybe we've got over an hour till it's done. But I'll come back. Yes, yeah, it's got 57 minutes till it's done. Um, I'll come back when it's done and we'll still go through this. Another thing I just want to point out, I opened up this layer styling panel and I restyled the imagery so that it is 432. Um, so we get true color out of this and it's going to be easier to evaluate that way. So just so you know, that's what I did. And then we'll come back and I'll show you the results here when it's done in about an hour. All right, that took about an hour, but we finally got this done. 
you can see with this model, we have a lot more classes. Um, and we can go through and just take a quick look at some of these. I'm going to use the identify tool for QGIS just to identify the features we have. I'm going to close that out. And let's see what we have. Let's start with the water. You can see that this roughly represents water. And let's see what we have here. I'm going to click over here. And you can see that this is being classified as forest, which is incorrect. This here is being classified as annual crop. Annual crop is more like a natural vegetation, um, but not too far off. Let's see what we have over here in the urban areas. It's being classified as a river. It's being classified as a highway. Highway's not too far off. River's kind of far off for urban. Let's see what we have over in this area. Pasture, not horrible. That's being classified as pasture. Industrial buildings, industrial buildings and those are more like pastures it looks like. We can zoom in and we can turn this model output off. But yeah, you can see that those are more like pastures and they're classified as buildings. So whereas our other model worked relatively well, I feel like the one with the nape and high resolution imagery, this model is not working so well. So these are just some things to be aware of as you work with these deep learning tools. They're out there, um, these models have been developed, there's training data for them. And they've been compiled in this deepness plugin for QGIS, and it's really powerful. You can get started with deep learning really quickly here. Um, but as you do, just be careful. Make sure that you check your data. Make sure you read the metadata. Um, like I said, these models aren't documented really well, or at least the documentation was not very easy to find, which was disappointing. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't use them. If you find the model works well, or if you want to take that model and train it with other data, it might provide a good opportunity for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've given, I hope it's given you an introduction to deep learning with QGIS and helped you see what might be possible. Um, like I said, this is gonna be a start for you. There's a lot more to get into, but you know, if you have questions, feel free to ask. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck with the GIS.